Hello friends on Facebook. It's time for another episode of Feeling Better. Let's uh, oh, excuse me. Blah. Let's start over. <laughs> Hello friends on Facebook. It's time for another episode of Feeling Better by Stretching Your Body Now, the later edition. I usually do this uh, every uh, 12, uh, 15 p.m. Hawaii, 3, 15 p.m. Uh, Pacific, and 6, 15 p.m. Uh, Eastern, but um, I needed to adjust my schedule today, so uh, just embracing what is and adapting. So I want to thank uh, those of you who are turning in live or on the replay for joining. Um, hi, Jackie. Long time no see. Thank you for uh, tuning in. And so my name is Jonathan Sugai, and I am a bodywork and mindset science expert. I've been practicing uh, massage therapy for almost 20 years now, and also been involved in personal development for the, over the last 10 years. And I'm coming to you live from my office, uh, the Alignment Center for Body and Mind in Honolulu, Hawaii. Now, for those of you tuning in, uh, please uh, drop a note and please uh, share with others in the chat uh, where you're tuning in from. And uh, in today's episode, we're going to go over uh, some simple stretches, uh, a, a total of uh, six stretches that are designed to help you release tension, uh, to be able to um, get some results very quickly to help you feel more uh, loose, more aligned, and more centered. Which uh, right now, you know, we're all working from home. Many of us are working from home and not able to work. This video is, and these stretches are a byproduct of, you know, having to uh, shut down my massage practice. And uh, for me to you know, be able to share some of these stretches that I've been developing over the last few years with my uh, massage clients. And uh, I wanted to be able to share them uh, with all of you out on Facebook and to get some practice on uh, being able to present uh, this online because that's where the, the way the world is moving. So uh, let's uh, jump in. Now, the first stretch for today, we're gonna be working with the feet, okay? now. We're going to be doing what I call the uh, plantar fasciitis, um, plantar fascia stretch. And it's great for symptoms like plantar fasciitis, which is foot pain. And uh, for this stretch, we're just going to use uh, a simple tennis ball. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually massage our foot uh, using the tennis ball. Now, why is that important? Well, the, the plantar fascia, if we look at this chart here, um, right here, is actually connected through connective tissue, fascia, all the way through your calf, hamstring, right through the back, and all the way up to your shoulder. So I discovered this connection many years ago uh, when I was studying the Anatomy Trains by Thomas Myers. It's a great body workbook. And I would teach um, massage to the University of Hawaii Medical School. And I would do this as a demo. I would show the difference massaging your foot mate would make, and it would create a difference in arm length. So if I massage my foot and show them, you know, the, the length of my arms after, there would be a difference in length. And that demonstrated the connection that fascia has in the body. So I used it as a demo for many years, but then when I started to do stretching and teach stretching to my clients, I realized, oh, you know what, this is actually an excellent stretch. And I also, it makes for a great demonstration. So grab a tennis ball and let's begin. So let me show you again what my current arm length looks like. Okay, so you can see it's pretty even, and I have actually pretty good flexibility because I've been doing these stretches a lot more consistently uh, since the uh, stay at home, uh, work at home mandate order. So what we do is we take the tennis ball and you're gonna massage your foot by stepping on it and you're gonna go back and forth for one minute. Now before we begin, for those of you who have Apple Watches, uh, if you wanna fill your exercise ring, there is a um, workout app and there's a preset setting for yoga. So if you activate that and you do your stretches, it'll count as yoga and it'll help you fill your exercise. Okay, so we're gonna do this stretch for one minute, starting now. And what you wanna do is you wanna step on the ball and you wanna go back and forth. And you wanna roll back and forth and really feel that tennis ball squeeze under the weight of your foot. And if this is your first time doing it, it's probably gonna hurt. You're probably gonna find a number of trigger points and that's where your nervous system, your body, your, your fascia, your soft tissues are holding onto tension. And this is tension from you know all the thousands of steps and the thousands of miles that you've taken. Um, if you're, you know, for women, if you're wearing heels, 
uh, for others if you're standing around a lot a lot of tension build up on our feet and we take our feet for granted you know we don't think about you know how hard they work for us tirelessly until it starts hurting but even if your foot is not hurting this is a great exercise to do and in just a few more seconds we'll see the difference it makes for the rest of the body okay so that's one minute okay so now this doesn't happen with everybody but for me we can see a significant difference in length so just releasing some of the tension in the foot has helped to loosen up it has had a, an effect on the rest of the body so again my arms are at a different length and then even when i reach for the floor it's easier on this side see i can i can more easily palm the floor and i can put the other side down just by massaging my foot and again, I, I've been doing this every day. In fact, I even massaged my foot last night. So just, uh, I had, the reason why I scheduled this um, live stream later was because I actually, one of my mindset clients, my Martini clients, wanted to do the appointment at the uh, same time. So I've been actually sitting for a number of hours. In fact, I got up really early this morning at six to uh, listen to Perry Sean's um, boot camp. So I've been actually, you know, sitting a lot all day. So I was really looking forward to uh, getting to do some stretches with all of you. Okay, so let's do the other side. So again, step on the ball. We're going to go back and forth for one minute. Again, you want to make sure you um, move the ball towards the ball of your foot and then roll all the way to the back. And you go nice and slow, back and forth. Lean in. You go back and forth. <clears throat> And again, if this is your first time doing it, um, it's probably going to be pretty sore. And a tennis ball is my preferred uh, tool because it has a nice give to it. It actually, um, when you really put your weight into it, it squeezes. A golf ball is probably a little too hard. You could use a racket ball or maybe a, a ping pong ball. But the tennis ball is uh, my preferred one. And uh, much gratitude to my clients who play tennis. They donated a whole bunch of their uh, used balls, so we get to recycle them, put them to good use. Okay, so again, you're going to go back and forth. All right, so that's a minute. Okay, you can see hands are even. Yep, I can more easily palm each side. I already feel looser in the back of my legs and even my arms. Okay, so that's the uh, plantar fascia foot stretch with the tennis ball. Very simple stretch. It's one of the easiest ones you can do. Great while you're, you know, watching Netflix or watching live streams or watching YouTube. Or, you know, if you're learning, you're taking an online course, you know, something you can do for yourself. One minute per side is the sweet spot, but you can do it longer if you want. All right. So next, we're going to move on to our second stretch today. And before I do that, I want to just say hello to... Uh, individuals who have just joined. Hi, Lauren. Thank you for joining. Hi, Kelly. Thank you for joining. Hi, Emmeline and Bridget and Kyle and Harpal and Lara and Ruchi and Sandra and Chris. Ah, and Robin. Hey, also Liz. For those of you who are still on, um, could you uh, drop a note and uh, let everybody know where you're tuning in from? Because I know this is not just Hawaii, but uh, people nationally and internationally. So it's so cool that we can all connect over the internet through Facebook and be able to share our love and wisdom through what we love to do. So getting back to the stretches, the second stretch we're going to do today um, is for our quads. Now, the quads are one of my favorites because um, one of the most common issues that I see in my massage practice is lower back pain. And what I discovered over the years is that lower back pain is a symptom and not the cause. Let me say that again. Lower back pain is a symptom and not the cause. Your back pain is actually coming from your legs. And why do I know this? Well, when I my clients come in complaining of back pain, they also... I asked them, okay, what movements, you know, what behaviors has it affected? 
and they often say, well, it's hard to walk. It's hard to get in and out of bed. It's hard to stand up from sitting and sitting down from standing. It's hard to go up and down the stairs. Um, for some clients, it's going to be some of those behaviors. And for some, it's uh, for the clients that really threw out their back. It's all of those behaviors. Well, guess what? It's not just the back. It's actually the legs are involved. All of those behaviors involve the legs. And when I actually check, when I actually do my, um, did, do my uh, assessment using my hands, using shiatsu, uh, the part that hurts the most, I'll check the back and I'll check the leg, the part that hurts the most is the quads. It's often the quads and when I press on them, they want to jump off the table. So before I started to do stretching in my practice, which has only been the, for the past few years, I would work on the quads and they'd have to suffer through it. They'd have to really breathe hard and uh, eventually it would get better. But when I started to use stretching as part of my practice, I realized, hey, this might be a more efficient way. And lo and behold, stretching out the quads relieves about fit, at least 50% of the pain. And clients are surprised at the difference that just a minute of stretching makes. And they ask, are you pressing with the same amount of pressure? And so this has become an essential part of my uh, therapy and also homework that I can give my clients uh, to be able to empower themselves. So here's my gift to you. So how, do we, how are we gonna stretch the quads? Okay, so the quad stretch looks just like this. Okay, you've probably done this at some point in your life, but I'm gonna add a little twist to it. So my little twist to it is actually to do it on your side and lay on your side instead of standing up and doing it. Why do I like it this way? Well, we don't wanna strain the other leg because again, we wanna um, release all that stress that is loaded up in the quads and other parts of your legs. In addition, um, by laying on our side, and we're gonna do it this way, lying on this couch here, pull your leg back. Instead of holding with your arm, you can use uh, the backing of the couch and you give your arm a break, okay? Because our arms are working hard for us and tension's building up there too. So we're taking advantage of inanimate objects, okay? So you lay on your side, pull your leg back, and just focus on breathing. We're gonna take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Okay, so we're gonna do this for one minute. Okay, and the other thing you can do while you're doing this, is you can reach above your head and kind of reach up. And again, because everything's connected through fascia, this will actually provide additional stretch pulling this way. There's a stretch going that way and there's a stretch going this way. It's like you're stretching at both ends through the fascia. Now, if this is, again, if this is your first time, it's probably going to be pretty intense and it's going to be a long first minute. But that's okay. You need a feeling. We're bringing up all this tension that has, it's unconscious. It sits in your mind. It sits in your brain. It sits in your body. And so, again, we're taking the time to release it. Okay, so deep breath in. Deep breath out. Breath in. And deep breath out. surrender to the pain you want to lean in breathe it in and breathe it out the more you surrender to it the more ease you have with it it's not going to be easy but you're going to have some ease with it and bring more ease to your body and mind okay so that's one minute all right so you can use a couch um, if you don't have a couch that's available let me demonstrate how you would lean up against the wall so you can use any wall I'm going to drop this back. Okay, and this will be the wall. So imagine either this is a bed or, you know, it's on the floor. Again, you lay on your side. Pull your leg back. And by doing it on the floor, you'll have more room because the couch can, this one, you know, this couch can be a little narrow. So if you're not as flexible yet, because you haven't stretched for years, um, you can give yourself more space to work with. Okay, so you want to just, uh, when you're doing the stretch, you want to make sure you don't go past uh, 7 or 8 out of 10 on the pain scale. Okay, you want to keep it around 7 or 8, okay? And so you pull your leg back, you can lean up against the wall, okay? And we're going to start our minute. Again, you want to breathe in deeply. And um, if it's your first time, don't worry about reaching. Actually, it's more important that you get, just get your leg back there. If this, uh, you're doing this on a repeat, this isn't your first time. You can take it up a notch by reaching above your head. And again, we're 
providing additional stretch, additional pull. Again, focus on your breathing, deep breath in and deep breath out. Deep breath in and deep breath out. Again, surrender to the pain, surrender to the tension. Allow yourself to feel it, breathe through it, and breathe it out. Again, we're just acknowledging all the tension that builds up unconsciously in our body. And we're allowing ourselves some time, some self-care to work through it and release it. Okay. All right. I'm going to ease out of that. Okay, and then you'll notice your legs will feel lighter if you're having some tightness or back pain uh, your legs are actually going to be working better and one of the reasons why the back seizes up is because uh, if these your legs are really tight they're not working very well so your back tightening up is actually in response to the leg stress and so your body is actually trying to limit your walking and limit your mobility trying to protect you from you and another symptom another case where uh, that another problem that clients show up with if they're having back pain is that they have trouble bending over so after we stretch this out their ability to bend over improves just like that and so it just takes uh, some repeated stretching and repeated uh, treatment and you know they can eventually touch their toes again so that's the quad stretch all right let me say hello to individuals who've shown up again hi Lisi. great to see you hi crystal hi dana hi Sun sunihiro Hi, Harry. Thank you for uh, joining. And again, um, if you're tuning in, uh, Sorry, please. Sorry, uh, I can't get that info for you here. No, Siri. Um, please uh, drop a note of uh, where you are tuning in from. And then if, if this is your uh, repeat visit, uh, if you've tried any of the stretches, uh, please uh, let others know what your favorite stretch is or any kind of results that you're getting from the stretches. We'd love to uh, hear about it. And We'd love for others to discover what uh, your uh, what kind of results and what's uh, occurring for you with the stretches. Okay, so uh, that was our second stretch. Uh, our third stretch for today is going to cover the hamstrings, back of the knees, and the calves. Okay. Now again, um, I love this stretch because, and this is one of the first stretches that I was playing around with, and we're taking again taking advantage of the fascia connection between the calf, the back of the hamstring and going all the way up the back and shoulders, okay? So let me show you how to do it. We're gonna move the camera over here to the wall and we're gonna use both the blank wall and the door, but I'm gonna do the door first so you can see it from two different angles. Okay, so all you need is either a blank wall or if you don't have a blank wall, you can use a door. And uh, you can see I'm barefooted right now and I got a hard floor. Uh, if you have carpet, don't worry about it. Your heel is protected. Um, if you have a floor, um, you want to protect your feet. So here's the rubber slipper, slipper method. And you would uh, put your foot on the rubber slipper and put your foot up against the wall. Okay. And uh, you lock your knee. And uh, you want to spread your uh, stance to your opposite leg. You want to be nice and wide and deep okay, like that. Let me move the camera over slightly. So you can see my back foot. Okay, there we go. Okay, so my left knee and leg is straight. Knee is locked. My right knee is slightly bent. I'm on the ball of my foot, on the back leg, on the right foot. So I can lean forward. And as you lean forward, you're going to feel that stretch right, go right through that back line, right through that calf, back of the knee, and the hamstring. And then for the upper body, you're going to put your two hands up on the door. Push and lean in. Okay, you're going to push and lean in. Okay, and while you're doing this, you're going to feel the stretch go right up your leg, right through your back. And then as you push and lean in, you also feel a stretch up in the shoulders. So this one is like a nice total body stretch. You're stretching the lower body and the upper body. And kind of gives you a preview for the shoulder stretch that we'll be doing last today. So let me um, reset my clock. We're gonna do this for one minute. Push and lean in. Again, you're feeling the, keeping the uh, left knee, left leg as straight as possible. Push and lean in. You're gonna feel the tension in the calf, 
through the back of the knee, hamstring, pushing and leaning in. Again, you're feeling the tension release out of the leg. You're going to feel the tension release out of the shoulders. <clears throat> Again, we're stretching the calf, the back of the knee, and the hamstrings. And you want to make sure you're breathing in deeply, deep breath in, and deep breath out. Deep breath in, and deep breath out. Okay, make sure your weight is forward, you're leaning towards your left foot, towards the wall. You're feeling the stretch on the left leg. You're not supposed to feel any stretch in the back leg. The back leg is just pushing forward. So as you lean forward, you really feel the stretch. Okay. All right, so that's the left side. And actually, let me show you. Um, for me, this usually makes a difference in my left arm. Okay, yep, we can see, we can see a difference there. My left arm has lengthened a bit. Okay, again, a little easier to palm because again this whole left side has lengthened further in addition to what we did with the tennis ball earlier so now let's go stretch out the right side and you can see it from a different angle and i will demonstrate with my shoes so you can see what it looks like with shoes on okay so we're going to do the right leg okay you put your foot up against the wall knee is locked nice wide deep stance square your hips towards the wall you can see this back foot uh, is on the ball of the foot my knee is slightly bent okay right knee is straight you want to lean forward lean forward towards the wall put your hands up above push and lean in again you're going to feel the stretch in the right leg leaning forward leaning in towards the wall and at the same time we'll feel some you can now see the stretch that's occurring in the shoulders you can see how I'm moving my scapula, kind of flapping it as if I had wings. And you can start to release some of the tension up in the scapula. And again, the last shoulder stretch we'll do today, our sixth stretch, you'll, um, when we get there, you'll see um, how they're somewhat alike. There's an overlap. So again, push and lean in. Feel the tension releasing from the calf, back of the knee and the hamstring. And again, you feel the tension release from the shoulders as well. Breathe deeply in and deeply out. Deep breath in and deep breath out. Surrender to the tension, surrender into any pain. Deep breath in and deep breath out. Okay. All right. So now let's check on my length of my arms. We'll see how they're even now. Yep. And then you can see I can more easily palm the floor. Yep. So I'm uh, recovering from the uh, tightness of uh, doing. Uh, I had a lot of video calls earlier today working with my. Uh, mindset clients and you know I get worked on too so working on my um, my mental emotional hygiene in my other work that I do so that's the uh, hamstring uh, knee and calf stretch okay so in the meantime we're going to move on to our fourth stretch uh, and uh, let me say hello to who has tuned in hi Derek great to see you hi Rick thank you for turning back in again hi John great to see you Hi, Dana, and uh, yes, hi, Chloe. Great to see you, too. Thank you for watching. All right. Oh, hey. The camera is slightly out of alignment. There we go. Hi, Sammy. Thank you for joining. For those of you who just joined in, uh, please drop a note and uh, let others know where you're tuning in from. It's cool to see where you're tuning in and from. And then if you're a repeat visitor, um, if you've tried any of these stretches, let me know what your favorite stretch is like and also any uh, interesting results that you've had from uh, doing the stretches so far. would love to hear about that. All right, so now our next stretch we're gonna do today is uh, for the glutes, okay? We're gonna stretch our 
gluteus maximus and the piriformis. This is great for a lot of tension that builds up from sitting on our butt, but this also, you also can build up tension from standing a lot. So, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't. So, you know, we had, there was a big popularity of transferring from sitting to standing desks. But if you stand all day, you can still impact your legs and you can impact, build up a lot of tension in the legs, a lot of tension in the hips. And yeah, your back is going to react to that. It's actually going to let you know that, hey, you know, you're not taking care of your legs. So whether you're sitting all day or standing all day, that also um, can impact your body. So you actually want to do both. You want to be able to sit and stand. So if you're sitting, definitely make sure you're taking some breaks and go take a stretch break. Do these stretches. It's a great way to get some movement and do something healthy for yourself. If you're standing all day, make sure you do some stretching, but also find some time to sit if possible, if your job allows for it. So again, you want to do both. You want to be just doing one or the other. You actually want to be doing a little bit of both and of course do some stretching. So we're going to do the glutes and there's two ways of doing it. Okay. So the first way is the sitting way. Okay. So this one's easy to do. You just cross your leg like this. And what we do is we lean forward and we lean forward. Okay. So and we do it for one minute. Okay, so we're leaning forward, and again, you're breathing into it, deep breath in, and deep breath out. Deep breath in, and deep breath out. Now, on past broadcasts, I've been commenting on the mind-body connection. And um, I was noticing a pretty significant difference between my left hip and my right hip. Now the left side of the body is the feminine side. The right side is the masculine side. So I, was, I know that uh, in the mind-body connection, the common issue in the hip area is things that we perceive as a pain in the butt, pain in the cole, pain in the ass. Um, and the hips are about direction. So I was thinking, okay, I gotta go, you know, go look at uh, where I'm still having uh, emotional uh, judgments with any emails or any so I did get to look at it and I actually got to go clear some stuff on my mom some exes so I'm noticing a difference is actually it's much easier to um, go into the stretch there's still some more there so I'm gonna keep digging but my dip my hip is definitely feeling better okay so that's one minute now let's do the other side okay so you put your cross your leg again lean forward Okay, and we're going to do this for one minute. And, yep, left side still feels a little, there's still a little more, more there. But the left hip and the right hip are starting to feel more alike. So it's kind of cool that I'm getting a chance to recheck every day. Because uh, how I'm spending my time is I'm doing these live streams, but before and after I also... Uh, take some time to do some uh, some mental emotional work uh, with my Demartini method facilitator colleagues, and I also still have the opportunity to serve others uh, with my private uh, coaching clients. But um, since I have extra time, we've been given the gift of time. I'm taking the time to uh, step up my uh, my own work, my own healing, so that I can be more aligned and centered, more grateful and be able to serve others uh, more because actually there's going to be a lot of um, a lot of opportunity to help uh, people's mindset uh, as we go through this massive transformation massive change okay so that's one minute all right ease out of that and again we stretched the uh the glutes and also the piriformis now the other way we can do it and i'll do a quick demonstration of the other way you can do it uh, lying down so you lay on your back, cross your leg, and then you pull with your legs and arms towards your chest. Okay? So let's just do this one for about 30 seconds, since we already did a minute for the other one. And you pull your legs and pull with your arms towards your chest. And I'm, again, I'm noticing um, better range than I was in the past live streams. I should probably, what I could do is I could take a screen cap and compare 
or even just clip out that section. Hmm. That'd be fun to look at the before and after. If you're interested in seeing the difference, I'll drop a note in the chat if you want to see the difference from when I started and where I'm at now. I can post that online. Okay, let's switch sides. Let's test off the other side. Again, you're going to cross your legs. Okay, and then pull with your legs and pull with your arms. And again, you can try the sitting method and the laying down method and, you know, see which one you like. If you uh, want to pick one over the other, that's um, You can do both if you want. That's even better. But, you know, if you want to just pick one or the other, whichever is more convenient, whichever, whichever one feels better to you. And again, you want to breathe in deeply, deep breath in, and deep breath out. Deep breath in and deep breath out. Okay. All right, so that's the glutes. That's our fourth stretch for today. That finishes our lower body. Now we're going to move to the upper body. Before I move to the upper body, I want to just say hello to uh, individuals who are uh, tuning in. So, hi, Susie. Hi, Chantal. Hi, Callie. Hi, Travis. Thank you for joining. Let me see if there's anybody else. Oh, Liata, thank you for coming back. Hi, Grant. Hi, Joyce. Are you keeping up with your stretches? Joyce is one of my regulars, so... Um, hopefully you're all uh, doing your stretches. And if not, your body will give you feedback. All the symptoms in your body is feedback of what you're doing too much of and what you're doing not enough of, in general. Okay, so uh, the... Upper body, we're going to do two stretches. Okay, so we've got the last two stretches out of our six today. Um, so the first stretch for the shoulders um, is what I call the tricep shoulder stretch. Okay, so this stretches the tricep, stretches the rotator cuff part of the shoulder. It also goes down the side of the body. Okay, so it looks like we're doing our triceps, and you probably have done this at some point. I know I did this during baseball. But I add a little twist to it, okay? We're gonna make sure you have a nice wide stance and we're gonna lean over to the right, just like that. Okay, lean over to the right. Okay, and while well, you're gonna feel the stretch go down the tricep, through the rotator cuff, and then down the side of the body. Okay, so let me reset my clock. And we're gonna do this for one minute. Okay, and you wanna make sure you pull Really feel it and lean. The pulling you'll feel more in the rotator cuff that stretches that part out, and then the leaning you'll feel the stretch go down the side of your body. This really helps lengthen the all the fascia along the ribs, through the obliques, which is right above your waist, right down to the hips, because that can get kind of out of balance and build up a lot of tension from sitting. So it's uh, you know, where many of us are now having to uh, do more video chat and staying in. <clears throat> so we do need to make sure we keep taking care of ourselves. Because again, these stretches help to keep your body more um, loose, regulate the tension, regulate your nervous system, and that you know helps with your overall immunity. You manage your stress, your immunity is better. So you want to make sure you taking care of yourself. Okay, I'm gonna ease out of that and you wanna come out of it slowly because it's probably gonna be a little achy. Again, shake it off. And actually, um, compared to my uh, earlier, uh, last week, I was having a lot more tingling, a lot more shooting pain. This is actually getting much better. So I'm also noticing uh, combination of the stretches and then I'm also you know taking the time to do some uh, mental emotional work with my Demartini method uh, facilitator colleagues uh, Curtis and Shelby and uh, Donna thank you Sh big shout out to you guys love you guys and uh, I'm noticing definitely much much more improvement on my left side because I'm getting to appreciate the uh, f feminine and the females in my life like my mom and my exes okay so that's the left side now we're gonna do the right 
Okay, so again, bend the elbow, grab with the opposite side, pull and lean. Okay, and we're going to stretch down the tricep through the rotator cuff and down the side of the body. Let me set my clock. One minute. Oh, that's cool. In past live streams, I was feeling a lot more tingling on my right arm, right hand. So you might feel some tingling. I'm actually feeling a whole lot less. That's pretty cool. So again, combination of the stretches, and I'm also using uh, the Demartini method. You'll clear out stuff. So I got to appreciate a lot of my own uh, actions and inactions. Open my heart. And I'm definitely feeling the difference in my arm and shoulder. That is cool. Okay, a few more seconds. All right, and we're gonna ease out of that. Okay. It's going to feel a little achy, but just come out of it nice and slow and then go ahead and shake it off. Okay, so that was the tricep and uh, shoulder stretch. It has a nice stretch right through some this spot right here, which um, in my massage practice, this is where a lot of tension builds up. This is where it's very sharp sometimes or for many people, including myself. But uh, this is one way of uh, calming it down and releasing some of the tension. And I will also stretch on the side. All right, so now we're gonna move on to our last stretch for today. We're gonna go over to the wall. And in the meantime, I can say hello to who's joined. Hi, Chris, great to see you. Hi, Patty, thank you for tuning in. And uh, if you'd like, uh, please uh, let everybody else know where you're uh, tuning in from. And uh, if uh, I know that uh, Patty, you tuning back in um have you uh, had the opportunity to do any of the stretches which one's your favorite what are you noticing uh so far with the stretches love to hear from that all right so now the uh the last uh stretch for today uh we're going to be uh doing something called the uh, shoulder scapula lift okay so this one really opens up the chest it helps to you know we end up feeling like this from being in front of our computers all day this really helps to actually open up and reverse that okay and I'll show it to you from two angles. So you see it from the side and then from the back. So you wanna, uh, again, use a, a blank wall or a door. You're gonna put your hands up in front of your face, about eye level. And you'll be a little bit, about at least arm, you start off at arm's length back and you take a couple of steps, about two steps back. You're gonna push and lean into the wall and then just let your arms stretch out because your hands are anchored. You have a nice, uh, stance that's a little wider than the hips. You're going to push and lean in and let your arms stretch and the shoulders stretch and just let your body hang down. And you're going to feel the stress and the tension surface from inside your shoulders, so inside here. And then as you're going down, you're going to feel uh, this, uh, your shoulder blade and your whole arm lifting up while your torso is coming down. So you're actually catching all the tension on the inside. So let me um, set my clock. Pushing and leaning in. And you want to take a deep breath in and deep breath out. Okay, and just let your body hang. And you're going to feel the tension come up. And then while you're here, you can kind of move your neck around. So I'll feel you some of the tension in your neck. And take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Deep breath in, and deep breath out. Can you feel your arms and your shoulders stretch upward, your torsos? falling downwards as you surrender to gravity. 
And again, surrender to the tension that's in your shoulders and you get to breathe it in and breathe it out. Okay, let's ease out of that. All right, so now let me show it to you from a different angle. And again, if you wanna do this again, um, again, one minute's a sweet spot, but you can do this for 90 seconds or two minutes. Let's do this for about 30 seconds, just to show what it looks like from behind. Again, hands up on the wall, push and lean in, let your body hang. Your knees are slightly bent, feet are a little wider than hip width. Push and lean in. And again, you can see how I can move my shoulder blades. It's like I'm flapping my wings. You can see that there's some similarity to the uh, shoulder portion of the hamstring knee calf stretch that we did earlier. That was our third stretch in the series. Okay. Again, breathe deeply in and deeply out. And then you can move your neck around, move your scapula. Again, feel the tension, breathe through it, and that'll help you to align and center. Because again, all that tension building up in our body starts to create distortions in our nervous system, our soft tissue, and our posture. So I'll definitely get uh, some pictures taken um, pretty soon, and I'll do that comparison. I know one person, at least one person was interested uh, in seeing the before and after, so uh, it'll be pretty cool to see uh, how I'm doing compared to some pictures I took uh, a few weeks ago. Okay, so that's our last stretch, and I want to say hello to Dana and Evan. Thank you for tuning in. Herman, thank you for tuning in. Hi, Emmeline. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining and glad you're enjoying it. Hi, Julie. Thank you for joining. Now we're almost towards the end of the broadcast, but uh, what I'd love to do at the end for people who just tune in so that you can get an idea of what we did earlier. And actually that picture's out of alignment and that's off brand. Now we're back in alignment on brand. Um, I'm gonna do a quick review of all the six stretches that we did today. So we began our live stream today uh, with uh, our feet. We did our plantar fascia tennis ball stretch. And again, quick review, step on the ball. You're gonna go back and forth, really lean into the ball for one minute. And again, this is gonna loosen up the fascia and your foot and it, because it's connected through the, the fascia connects the calf, the back of the hamstring, and it runs all the way up to the shoulders, it creates a difference in shoulder length. And if you watch the earlier part of the broadcast, you can see the difference it makes. But again, you just go back and forth on each side for one minute. Each of these stretches, the ideal uh, sweet spot is about one minute, okay? So one minute per side, the first stretch, so that's two minutes your time. Okay, the second stretch is gonna be for the quads. And again, this is great for um, releasing all the tension in the quads, because again, this can lead to back pain. Because again, if your quads are, are uh, overloaded, your legs aren't working very well, your back is gonna tighten up in response to that. This also can affect your knees too. So this is great for relieving knee pain, knee pain and back pain. Okay, so you lay on your side. So you can use a wall or a couch. So I'll just do the wall demonstration. Pull your leg back. So instead of doing this standing up, you lay on your side, because then again, you don't strain the other side and you're not straining your arm, okay? Because we want to actually release tension out of the body. So anything we do to just focus on that uh, makes a difference. We do this for one minute per side. And again, if uh, it's your first time and you're not that flexible, give yourself more room. Switch sides, do it the other way. And you pull your leg back. And uh, if you want to take it up a notch, you can also reach up above your head. You can feel the pull, feel the stretch through the fascia like that. Okay, so that's our uh, second stretch. Again, you do one minute per side, that's two minutes. So we're up to four minutes for the first two stretches. Okay, then we're gonna go review the um, hamstring, calf, and knee stretch. And make sure you protect your heels by wearing shoes or you can use rubber slippers. Actually, why don't I do both? And again, you use a wall, you dorsiflex your foot, 
lock your knee, have a nice wide deep stance. You're gonna lean forward, put your hands up above your head. Okay. And you're gonna lean forward into the wall and this left leg, you're gonna feel the stretch. Okay, and you do that for one minute. Okay, and then we'll, let's do the other side. Okay, right leg, lock the right knee, have a nice wide deep stance. Lean in towards the foot, towards the wall. Lean forward and you're gonna feel the stretch. Put your hands up in the air. Push and lean forward. Okay, and you do that for one minute. Okay, so that was our third stretch. Two minutes, one minute per side. So we're up to six minutes now. And then, we're gonna go back here on the couch. We're gonna now do the um, glute and piriformis stretch. There's two ways of doing it. You can do it sitting. So you cross your leg, lean forward, and lean forward for one minute. And you're gonna feel the stretch right in the glute. And sometimes you might feel stuff shoot down the leg. Like for me, I'm actually kind of feeling it shoot down the leg and or down here, but much less than in past live streams. So I know that I'm making progress with the stretches and also my mental emotional work outside of this. Okay, so that's the sitting method. And then for lying down, you can do it this way as well. Cross your leg, pull your legs together towards your chest and pull with your arms. And again, you're gonna feel the stretch. Actually, let me do it this way. You're gonna feel it here. Okay, so the leg that's crossed is the side you'll feel it on. Okay, and you do that for one minute. Okay, so that's the, the fourth stretch, the last one for the lower body in this series. Okay, so we're up to eight minutes now. And then uh, we're gonna go now do the um, tricep rotator cuff stretch. You bend your elbow, pull, lean. Again, we're gonna be stretching right through here. You're gonna feel the stretch go down the side of the body. Pull and lean. Again, you're gonna feel the stretch go right through. You might feel some tingling because some of the nerves uh, we'll get uh, squeezed a bit and that's okay. All right, and then you switch sides, bend your elbow, pull and lean. Okay, you're gonna feel that go right through there. Okay, so that's the uh, fifth stretch. We're up to 10 minutes now. And then the last stretch, go back over to the wall. And I'll say a quick hello to uh, James Silva. Hey there. Hi, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Yep, since you can't see my dad, go uh, make sure you do these stretches. All right, so um, the last stretch is the um, shoulder scapula lift stretch. You know, we feel like we're hunching over doing this. Uh, this stretch helps to reverse that, okay? So you put your hands up against the wall, push and lean in, and let your body hang like that. Okay, and make sure you have a nice wide stance. And again, you're anchored into the wall, let your body hang, you feel it stretch through your shoulders and your arms. And this is what it looks like from this angle, so you get a, another view. Okay, and remember to breathe in deeply, deep breath in, deep breath out. Because all these stretches, what they do is they help surface all the tension and the stress that loads up in our body, it tends to go unconscious and uh, we hold on to it and we don't even know it until it becomes a symptom. But the more you do these stretches, the more in touch, the more connected with yourself um, you'll feel. And that's one of, the, um, one of the challenges, but also the area for growth for many of us um, in this time of you know, temporary social distancing and social isolation. We may be perceiving we're disconnected from others, but this is actually a time, you know, we've been given the gift of time to really focus on connecting with ourself. And so sometimes uh, doing practices like yoga, stretching, meditation, reflection, because we're now not, you know, freeing ourselves up from the distractions of others, we now have the time to really get in touch with ourselves. And so it takes practice, it's not comfortable to really look at oneself and really reflect. Um, it takes a certain amount of discipline, a certain amount of effort. So one of the things you can do is actually practice your stretching. This actually helps you feel more at ease with it. It's not gonna be easy, but anything you can do to make more 
have more ease with it um, is recommended. And again, this is about taking care of yourself, taking care of your stress levels. Because again, you do these stretches, you release the tension, uh, you'll find that you'll sleep better at night. You'll actually feel like you're more, you get more out of your sleep. And that's one of the most important principles um, that gets overlooked um, when uh, we're dealing with any kind of uh, diseases or any kind of, uh, especially colds. One of the reasons why we come down with a cold is because uh, we've been pushing ourselves, neglecting our sleep. I know in my personal experience, I have caught colds when I had been neglecting my sleep. I was building up sleep debt and my body would give me body ache fever, sinus issues uh, to get me to slow down, stop, get caught up on my uh, sleep. I had some sleep debt to pay with uh, interest. So uh, the individuals who are coming down with uh, symptoms, if we looked at their sleeping uh, history, they probably were neglecting their sleep for a long time. And uh, that's why it actually affects the old even more because yeah, they haven't been sleeping well for a long time or you know, just really taking care of themselves. Um, it adds up. So make sure you're getting your sleep, six to eight hours of sleep. Make sure you're drinking a lot of water, um, three to four liters of water. Watch your sugar intake. Sugar, uh, I found personally, would uh, affect my immune system. And you know, I've actually triggered some colds because I eat too much sugar. So really watch your sugar intake. Try to focus on water best you can. Uh, fizzy water is great. I like uh, doing fizzy water. And I sweeten it with some uh, stevia. Makes for a great uh, healthy soda. Um, and then make sure you're eating well, make sure you're eating moderately. So um, uh, try not to overeat. If you find yourself overeating, start reflecting. Why am I overeating? What am I stressed about? What am I not dealing with? If you start to really become conscious and start to address it, uh, you'll find that your behaviors are more moderate. And sometimes you're not focusing on priority. You're focusing on the problem and not the solution. If you get really focused on solving the problem, you find that you actually are not that hungry. But if you're avoiding it or just, you know, we, we often eat to avoid because we're bored or because we're scared. You know, again, we'll either overeat or undereat. So try to focus on eating just the right amount, eat high quality food, nutrition, focus on nutrition. There's many different eating styles. Find the one that works for you. I've tried a whole bunch. I've taken the best and I have kind of a mix of all of them. So again, moderate, um, high quality food with a lot of nutrition, try not to eat too much, uh, eat moderately. And then uh, focus on priority. Uh, this is a time where you know a lot of changes are occurring and we're really getting to reflect on what is most important to us. And so, you know, uh, one of the things that was very important to me was practicing massage. But, uh, you know, in honoring the stay-at-home uh, mandate, I have chosen to suspend my practice uh, to, you know, help out and make sure I'm not putting myself at risk or any of my clients at risk. Um, and so in the meantime, I thought, okay, what's the next prior priority thing to do? And this was one of the ideas that came up. I was like, well, you know what? It's time to go share these stretches, you know, go, uh, go help people, go serve people in a way that, uh, you know, honors social distancing. And of course, I also get to practice uh, presenting on video because that's the future. You know, getting more online is going to be the future. So, you know, one of the blessings out of this crisis is it got me off my butt and uh, really start getting into the habit of doing some regular live streams and start to, you know, think about, okay, how can I get uh, my business more online and, you know, have more of an online presence and practice presence online. So that's one of the things I'm looking at. So think about, you know, what could, what are you, you know, what are your, how are your priorities changing? What is priority? What can you do to make the most of it? And uh, if you don't know what your priorities are, uh, one of the best discoveries I made in my journey was to actually, uh, when I learned from Dr. John Martini to do the Martini values determination process. And you can do that for free online at uh, drdmartini.com slash values. Or you just go to the webpage, look for the values determination. Do that. Determine your values. And actually, once you know what your values are, it's much easier. It helps you make better decisions because uh, you make the best decisions when you're actually knowing what your values are. It's really made a big difference for me in my life. And it's helping me to make the decisions in order to adapt to the changing environment. And then lastly, um, Remember what you're grateful for. This is a time to really honor, you know, count your blessings. Look at, okay, you know, again, what's the opportunities in this? How's this serving? How are we growing? Really look at count your blessings. And so, you know, do some daily gratitudes and any challenge you're facing, instead of saying, you know, just focusing on the pain, say, okay, how is this benefiting me? How is this serving me? 
How am I adapting? How am I growing? Start asking those questions. Again, from another great lesson from Dr. Martini. The quality of our life is determined by the quality of the questions we ask. And so by asking those questions and answering them, you will actually find it. Because actually the answers are inside your own mind. They're unconscious. They're subconscious. The pain in your body, the tension in your body is actually the benefits you haven't expressed yet. And so what I've been noticing in my shoulders and in my body, I've been actually tapping into a lot of ingratitude and hidden blessings that I haven't expressed yet. So in between my, uh, uh, my live streams in the morning, I'm working with my, a uh, couple of my colleagues and I'm actually looking at my stuff. I'm actually using this opportunity to kind of figure out, you know, where I'm holding on to stuff. And I'm actually feeling the difference too. So I'm going to go also take some pictures at some point pretty soon and we can compare. We can actually see the difference. Maybe you can do both the stretching and, you know, whatever other healing modality work. Um, that actually, you know, is very powerful. You're not only addressing what's happening in the body physically, but you can also happen to address what's happening in the mind, mentally and emotionally. Put the two together, you got some very powerful combination and you get even better results. So I'm uh, working on that now because I know that's actually gonna be the future. There's a lot of stress being created right, right now. People are becoming really aware of their, their stuff. And so um, the need for doing more than just the physical work, that's coming. And so I'm working on that and that's why Thanks to my um, work with my uh, branding consultant and brand strategy expert, uh, Jennifer Kem. She helped me come up with the name uh, the Alignment Center for Body and Mind because just the body work uh, dishonors my other side, which is the mindset, which is about mental emotional hygiene, mental emotional fitness. I'm working on putting the two together. So that's a little bit of my soapbox there. Um, again, I want to thank all of you who tuned in live uh, to uh, Thank you for making some time to join me on this live stream. I do this daily at 12.15 Hawaii, 3.15 Pacific, uh, 6.15 Eastern. Uh, you can, sometimes there's a little thing that uh, comes up in the chat if you wanna turn on live notifications. If not, you can look at the post. There's three dots in the corner. Uh, click on that if you wanna be notified when I go live. Today was a little later because I had an opportunity to serve one of my mindset clients. So I decided to you know, move this later uh, because he's on the mainland. Um, but uh, usually it'll be at 12.15 Hawaii unless I, you know, I need to reschedule. But I am making a commitment to be able to share this live daily. Uh, this is part of me um, still uh, fulfilling my values to do something with the body and to be of service and to be able to help people at a distance take advantage of technology. So uh, with that being said, I wanna uh, tell you thank you. And um, Please uh, watch the uh, my uh, the recording of uh, the replay if you tuned in late. I have my others, they're on uh, my timeline and they're also being hosted at YouTube as well. So uh, thank you very much. I appreciate you, you all turning in and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow and on future live streams. And if you tune back in, uh, please uh, leave a note and let me know what stretches you've tried, what your results are. And uh, if there's anything that uh, you heard me talk about, like the mind-body connection or the Martini method work or anything else, any questions, feel free to drop a note in the chat or message me uh, directly online. I uh, would love to be able to connect with you and help you out in any way that I can. All right, thank you very much, and I'll see you soon. All right, aloha.